I'm pleased to introduce Expression Biotech to you. My name is Ben Franzen. I'm the CEO of the company. And the main focus of my pitch here is actually our breast cancer vaccine asset, as was just alluded to. We call it ES2BC001. It has a very strong preclinical package, and we're just on the verge of bringing this into the first clinical uh, phase one study as we speak. First, some words about the company. Uh, we are listed on NASDAQ First North growth market since 2016. We are operating in Denmark. The Swedish uh, holding company owns Expression Biotechnologies, APS, where all operations take place. We all have all our lab facilities and uh, development operations in, in Denmark. This is also where we have our protein uh, expression platform that we brand Express. This is what was the uh, reason for establishing the company back in 2010. It's been used uh, tremendously uh, with more than 100 clients for the first 10 years of the company's lifetime. And we're now using that in our own vaccine development pipeline and still maintain some service business around this platform. Furthermore, we own 34% of a company called AdaptMac. We co-founded that company back in 2017 with a group of researchers from Copenhagen University. They had invented a proprietary virus-like particle technology. And it's important to mention here because it, it's also part of the breast cancer vaccine asset that I'm going to talk more about. Our Express platform has been used, as I mentioned, now for 15 years, and we have strong proof of concept, uh, also clinically. I'm very pleased that we have actually a phase three clinical validation of this technology. It was an integral part of the COVID-19 vaccine asset that Bavarian Nordic, they brought all the way through to clinical phase three last year uh, for commercial reasons. They shelled the asset, which is a pity for us because we were looking into some commercial milestones just around the corner. But Bavaria Nordic is a huge vaccine player. They need to focus on the MPOX business and bringing a COVID, uh, sorry, chikungunya vaccine to the market shortly. Anyway, as a biotech company, we have a clinical phase three validated platform. Not many biotech companies have that, and that's, that's great. Express is also used by University of Oxford in several clinical stage malaria assets, uh, four different projects uh, running uh, in phase one and phase two, all sponsored by University of Oxford and their uh, grant awards. And then we have the preclinical stage, but now actually in, in a phase of being uh, approved for the first clinical trial, the HER2 uh, breast cancer that I'm going to speak more about shortly. We have earlier uh, in our uh, pipeline various infectious disease vaccine projects uh, in CMV and, and uh, influenza and nipavirus as well, more or less uh, funded uh, by non-diluting funding from various grants. <clears throat> but uh, HER2 breast cancer is where we focus. And breast cancer is, uh, of course, you know, a devastating disease. It can affect up to one in eight women uh, over a lifetime and uh, more than 600,000 uh, patients die every year from this disease. In 25% of breast cancer cases, uh, it's caused by overexpression of a protein called HER2. HER2 is a protein that we all carry, but this overexpression can lead to, to, yeah, at the end of the day, fatal uh, breast cancer cases. And this is the target of our uh, vaccine approach. Uh, and we call it ES2BC001, uh, and it's made of antigens that are being produced in our Express platform, and we couple it to a virus-like particle, the VLP technology that I described earlier. The good thing about the antigens made in Express is that we actually uh, target all four epitopes of the HER2 uh, protein, this is actually an advantage if you look to existing standard of care monoclonal antibody treatments which target only one epitope. Um, and the fact that we can couple this or display it on the surface of a virus-like particle means that when you administer this drug to the body, the body uh, will effectively, in theory, uh, 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 induce an immune response to get HER2 antigens uh, to, to uh, handle this disease. 
We see the VLP concept already uh, in a commercial setting. It's also a VLP concept in uh, HPV and HPV uh, vaccines uh, from Big Pharma. Uh, and it, as I mentioned, it's a very efficacious uh, platform, very safe, and provides also a durable immune response, which we saw in the, case in the COVID-19 vaccine. So we also expect here to overcome resistance with a durable effect. And it can be combined with standard of care and basically is a, an off-the-shelf, scalable and cost-effective treatment opportunity. We have a very compelling preclinical data package that we have generated over the last three years. This is just a snapshot. Uh, a lot of this has been published in a, in a 2022 scientific paper. We made this together with University of Bologna, which has state-of-the-art mice models uh, in the breast cancer vaccine field. And the short of the matter is, if you follow the red curve here, which is our vaccine versus the other control groups, you can see a complete inhibition of growth of tumors in a mice setting uh, and even actually 100% uh, survival if you uh, inject these, this vaccine in mice that uh, would otherwise uh, develop uh, breast cancer. So that's extremely encouraging to us and we've seen this again and again over the last three years uh, and now we hope we can translate this into clinical uh, evidence as well. If you look at it from a competitive point of view, uh, this is a table that shows monoclonal antibodies, antibody drug conjugates, and tyrosine kinase inhibitors in the first three columns. These are standard of care treatments in this field today, and you can see uh, other vaccines, uh, as well as our vaccine, ES2B C001. And we really believe that we have an edge here across existing standard of, of care and even other vaccine approaches. And this goes even uh, when it comes to, to uh, side effects. Uh, it's actually known that uh, monoclonal antibodies uh, in up to 8% of cases can cause cardiovascular side effects. We don't believe we will uh, experience that. We can overcome the resistance. So in up to 30% of cases, patients will actually develop resistance. So they will not benefit from a monoclonal antibody treatment. We have also evidence, which I have not time to show you here, that we can overcome this resistance with our vaccine approach. It's uh, an easy administrable uh, therapy, and then it's uh, VLP-based, as I mentioned, uh, and we believe it's very cost-effective. We can produce gram per litre uh, material, both with the antigen and the VLP, so it's, uh, it's looking good. <clears throat> Going ahead, we have now financed uh, the non-clinical package uh, over the last couple of years. And we are right now in a waiting position because one month ago we filed the clinical trial application to conduct the first clinical trial. And that's a very exciting waiting time. Uh, we expect to start the trial for real uh, in the first quarter of 25. We have just closed a financing round and received other financing or other earlier this year that can bring us uh, ahead with this clinical phase one trial. And of course, uh, next steps in the future will be to actually demonstrate uh, clinical proof of concept. Uh, because eventually, as a biotech company, you always have the ambition to actually get a clinical proof of concept after clinical phase two. That's the highest value. Facing reality, we are actually already in dialogue with various potential partners about this concept and the preclinical data that we have so far. Uh, so depending on the ability for a partner to progress on this asset going forward, uh, we'll see. Um, it depends on, uh, on, on what kind of financing there is in this. We have other indications also on this uh, going forward when it comes to broadening beyond breast cancer. For example, HER2 also uh, is very prevalent in uh, gastrointestinal uh, cancers as well. Very shortly, we have more than 200 years of experience in our management team and at the board. Um, we have a very strong uh, oncology scientific advisory board. I'm just highlighting the three of the key opinion leaders below. And uh, I want to 
uh, acknowledge Dr. Rupert Barge to the lowest left corner, uh, who is a professor from Medical <laughs> University of, of Vienna, and that's exactly where we're going to start the first clinical study here soon. When it comes to financing, as I mentioned, we've just concluded a financing round. Uh, this actually includes two warrant programs that are exercisable here around 1st December this year and around 1st October next year. Uh, so uh, look for uh, news coming from us here in the near future. Of course, we are going to inform about the status of the clinical trial application uh, and then look into uh, starting the first of human trial and seeing some uh, observations and results coming out here in the very near future. Uh, and just a summary of this. Uh, and that said, yeah, I'm ready for questions. <laughs> Thank you so much, because I think you have interesting questions to answer. Please mm -hmm. come and join me here in the center. Um, first question, how do you intend to position ES2B COO1, <laughs> did I get that right, in the breast cancer treatment landscape? Uh, I think uh, we are inspired by the big pharma companies who are marketing uh, the VLP vaccines such as uh, Severix and Gardasil against uh, cervical cancer. Uh, so uh, commercialization strategy, uh, we'll look into that. Uh, as I mentioned with that table, looking at, at the advantages versus competitors, that also goes into our positioning as well. So all, all these thoughts, of course, we're thinking about. Mm -hmm. Looking to enter phase one with the ES2B CO1, you are already looking for a partnership. Why is that so early? I think as a biotech company, you need to present the data at scientific congresses and at investor events like this, and then partnership uh, conferences as well. I think you need to start as early as possible to show the evidence that you have. Uh, I have uh, close to 30 years of experience in, in the life science industry and have been responsible for business development and partnering activities for decades, and you need to start early. That doesn't mean that you immediately can make a deal, but it means that that you get some uh, notion uh, and thoughts uh, triggered at the right companies uh, early, and then they want to follow you. And that's important. And then we're in a dialogue, and then we'll see what mm -hmm. happens. Is there ES2B vaccine better, or is the uh, ES2B vaccine better than existing HER2 antibodies? And will the vaccine replace monoclonal treatments? That's a very good question. Uh, <laughs> at the end of the day, of course, we would have the, we have the ambitions for uh, being first-line treatment. Of course, who wouldn't have that ambition? Uh, but uh, it's a very established field, the breast cancer field, especially with the monoclonal antibodies out there. We can, as I mentioned, uh, overcome the resistance, so we can actually bring this therapy on top of existing treatment. We'll see if we eventually can actually replace uh, replace it. Mm -hmm. What will pricing be uh, when our e <laughs> HER2 uh, biosimilars? Uh, that's, a, that's a difficult question. Uh, there are so many factors into a, a, a pricing estimate. Uh, but of course, looking at monoclonal antibodies that can cost more than $100,000 uh, for treatment, uh, we're looking into to a high price because of the premium advantages of this vaccine approach. Um, but How much have you thought about this? Or do you think it'll come uh, after a while? I think we are forced also to think about these uh, things very from very early on. Mm -hmm. um, but setting an ex exact price, of course, we also make our business cases and, uh, and develop our own net present value models based on uh, estimates of this. So I'm not going to disclose our our uh, details on that one, but uh, it's going to be competitive. I can understand that you can't disclose it here, but is there a number in your, uh, you know, internally mm -hmm. already? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Great. Uh, what interest do you have, have you seen in the project and your platform so far? That will be the last question. Yeah, well, we, as I mentioned, we also go to scientific congresses where we actually present the, the preclinical data package here in a scientific setting, and we get a very good dialogue. Um, and that's both across uh, events in, in, uh, in North America and, and Europe as well. So our chief scientific officer, 
Dr. Fashiat Guirako, uh, who's mostly handling these. Uh, he's, he's keeping himself busy on that front. Uh, that's actually also kind of business development in a way. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for answering our questions and for your presentation. Thank you.